Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good and He is greatly to be praised. Beside Him, there is no other God. Beside Him, there is no other God. He is the great I am. He is the ancient of days. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? For He is good and His mercies endure forever. Father, you are good and your mercies endure forever. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. Receive all adoration in the name of Jesus. Can we just bless the name of the Lord? For he is the I am that I am. He is the strong and breasted one. Father Lord, we adore you. Lord, we exalt your name. For you alone are worthy to receive all glory. We exalt your name. For you alone are worthy to receive all honor. Hallowed be your name in all the earth. In the name of Jesus. Can we ask God for mercy? Anyway, we have sinned against him through our thoughts, our words, our actions. Lord, we ask for mercy. Son of David, please have mercy on us. Please have mercy on us. Help us, O oh God, to worship you tonight in spirit and in truth. Help us, O oh Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. May all glory and all honor be ascribed unto you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Oh, matchless love and beauty, endless words. And nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Oh, matchless love and beauty, endless words. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Your presence, your presence is heaven to be. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Is heaven. Is heaven. Is heaven to me. To me. To me. To me. To me. Your presence. Your presence is heaven. Is to me, who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? You are the matchless love, matchless love, and beauty, endless word. Oh, nothing in this world can satisfy. Only Jesus, Jesus, you're a cup that will run dry. Your presence, your presence is heaven. To me, your presence is heaven 
other name fade away.
Lord, every other name, other name fade away. Other name fade away. I don't know what is that name that wants to exalt and save above the name of Jesus in your life. Can we just declare that in the atmosphere? Whatever it be that wants to look like a shame in your life. Lord, let your name be seen in my life. Let your name be seen in your, in your church. Let your name be seen. Let your name be seen. Let your name be seen. Can we just bless the name of Yahweh? Can we just bless the name of Yahweh? Mashada Bado Shalira Hashe Rempedo Sanimana Shali Prado Shale Bradus Rekesha de Prado Shada Bedegade Mashake Prado Shana Medo Shada Bedosha You deserve all the glory Jesus 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 Mashana Mana Se Prado Sana Meneste Let's bless the name of the Lord. Let's bless the name of the Lord. He's Yahweh. He's Yahweh. He's Yahweh. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. Yahweh is your name. Can we just exalt the name of Yahweh? Can we just exalt the name of Yahweh? Yeshua is your name. Adonai is your name. The sovereign God, that's who you are. The sovereign God, that's who you are. Can we just bless him? 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 Mashaka Prado, Sada Bradesh, Ramana, Seke Bradi, Sana Bagada Gada, Retes, Sada Bradi, Sada Bagada Gada, Let Seke Bredo, Sada Bagada. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Yahweh, we worship you. Makada, Seke Bredi, Sana Bagada, Letes, Sana Bagada, Bagada Gada, Mashoko Prado, Seke Bredo, Sada Bradesh, Sada Bagada. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. Amen. 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 Can we open our mouths and begin to thank God? Let's tell him thank you for another day. You, Let's tell him thank you for another day. You, Let's tell him thank you for another day. He's worthy to receive all glory. Lord will say thank you. Let's tell him thank you for another day. Hallowed be your name in all the yet. Hallowed be your name in all the yet. Let's tell him thank you. For keeping us thus far. Lord, we say thank you for Sunday. We say thank you for the week. Thank you for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Lord, we are here again on Wednesday. It's all by your grace. Can we just tell him thank you? Can we just tell him thank you? Can we just tell him thank you? Yahweh, we say thank you. El Shaddai, we say thank you. El Shaddai, we say thank you. For those who thank the Lord shall have their tank full. Father, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for sustainance. Thank you, Lord, for sustainance. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your preservation. In this season, that people are having accident left, right, and center. Lord, you have preserved us. And we are here to say thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful for your preservation. We are grateful for your protection. We are grateful for your provision. Lord, we are grateful. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. 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 In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Let's ask God for mercy. Let's ask him for mercy anywhere we have sinned against him through our thoughts, our words, our actions. Father, we come before your throne and we ask for mercy. Father, Lord, show me mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Anywhere we have sinned against you, anywhere I have sinned against you, through my thoughts, through my words,
through my actions lord jesus show me mercy father lord show me mercy lord show me mercy have mercy upon your church have mercy upon your church have mercy upon us have mercy upon me have mercy upon the workers lord anyway i've come short of your sweet glory through my thoughts through my words through my actions father lord have mercy son of david please have mercy lord please have mercy upon me in the name of jesus lord please have mercy upon me in the name of jesus and we have sinned against you and we have sinned against you through my thoughts through my words through my actions father have mercy lord have mercy in the name of jesus father have mercy father have mercy in the name of jesus have mercy upon the children have mercy upon the teenagers have mercy upon the pastorator have mercy have mercy upon the youth have mercy upon our fathers have mercy upon our mothers have mercy have mercy have mercy have mercy have mercy lord have mercy upon the workers have mercy in the name of jesus have mercy in the mighty name of jesus for in jesus mighty name we have prayed we're gonna pray we're gonna pray we're gonna ask god that lord let your will be done let your kingdom come father let your will be done let your kingdom come first in my life let your will be done let your kingdom come let's open the mouth and pray father in the name of jesus we ask by your mercy that your will be done continually in my life and your kingdom come in my life in the name of jesus father let your will be done let your kingdom come in the name of jesus lord let your will be done let your kingdom come in my life in my destiny in the name of jesus in the name of jesus father let your will be done let your kingdom come by your mercy oh god let your will be done by your mercy oh god let your kingdom come rata shalabadata lempe do sheke fredi shana manata leke sheke fredi shana managadagada repesco palina na padaste lefe do sene menista let your will be done let your kingdom come in my life in the name of jesus ma sheke feni manaste lempe do Sani manaste rata shana madaga daga da le pedo sana menisha le pedo sana madaga daga da le pedo sana magadu padi padas te begadete lo let your will be done let your kingdom come in my family in the name of jesus let your will be done let your kingdom come in my career let your will be done let your kingdom come in my life and all that concerns me let your will be done and let your kingdom come in my siblings life in the name of jesus let your will be done let your kingdom come in my father and my mom's life in the mighty name of jesus for in jesus mighty name we pray we're going to pray. We're going to ask God also that let his will be done. Let his kingdom come upon his church. Over today's service. Upon his church in general. Over the redeemed Christian church of God, Guyana. And over today's service. Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. In the name of Jesus over the church, over the redeemed Christian church of God, Guyana. Lord, let your will be done. Let only your will be done. Let only your will be done. And let your kingdom come over the redeemed Christian church of God, Guyana. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come over Potter's house. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come over today's service tonight. 
in the name of Jesus. Over today's service tonight, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. In the name of Jesus. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come over the church. In the name of Jesus. Let only your will be done. Let only your will be done. Let only your will be done. In the name of Jesus, let your kingdom come. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let your will be done. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. This is a month of higher grounds. A... a an upliftment to higher grounds. And there was something that struck into my spirit yesterday. Is that God should help me not to fight against my own self. In the attainment of what he has destined for me. In the attainment of what he has destined for the church. That we ourselves should not be our own enemy. Let's pray that Lord God Almighty what you have destined for me this month. What you have destined for your church this month, it shall come to pass. And I myself, I will not stand against myself in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, whatever you have destined for me this month, whatever you have destined for your church this month is coming to fruition in the name of Jesus. And the church shall not stand against herself and the people shall not stand against themselves in this season in the name of Jesus. Lord, what you have destined for us this month shall come to fruition, shall come to fruition in the name of Jesus that I myself will not be my own enemy and the church herself shall not be her own enemy in the name of Jesus. For what Whatsoever you have destined for us shall come to fusion this month in the name of Jesus. In the month of April, Lord God Almighty, we shall not be our own enemies in the name of Jesus. But rather we shall move in alignment. We shall move in alignment for what you have in stock for us this month. We shall move in alignment for what you have in stock for us this month in the name of Jesus. What you have for the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Potter's House. What you have for the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Guyana, and her members in this month. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we move in alignment. Lord, we move in alignment. In the name of Jesus, we position ourselves in alignment. In the mighty name of Jesus, we position ourselves in alignment. In the name of Jesus, we position ourselves in alignment in the name of Jesus. Mashaka Prados, Elira Dash, Lepedos, oh, being guided by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are steps, our steps are being ordered by the Lord, and we are aligned. We are aligned in His ways, we are aligned in His thoughts, we are aligned in what His heart is talking for us in His heart. In the name of Jesus, Lord, your church works in alignment. Your church works in alignment by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, her members work in alignment for what you have in stock for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we work in alignment. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we work in alignment. In the mighty name of Jesus, we walk in alignment. Marata shada brada rete sada bede gede gede lampa shoko prado shene menista le fedi shana manaste rete sheke predi shana bagada gada le kamba do sede pedo shada bada gada rana sheke fredi palusta le pedo shaka bada sheli radaste le pedo sede bede le pede frede kede gede gede oh even the leaders Lord the leaders they walk in alignment they walk in alignment to lead your church in the way that she ought to go. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this month, 
in the month of April. Lord, every leader you have destined in the church works in the alignment for what you have destined for them and for the church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our leaders, they work in alignment in the name of Jesus. Our leaders, they work in alignment in the name of Jesus. Our leaders, they work in alignment by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, Masheke Freddy Shanamanata, Lefredo Shadabado Senemenista, Lefredo Shakabada, Sefredi Shadabagada, Masheke Freddy Bada, Masada Badagadagada, Lesha de Fredesha, Rete Shadabedete, Rata Shanamanaste. Thank you, Jesus. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord will say thank you. Lord will say thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord will say thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to pray. We pray that for spiritual growth and development, according to the book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 2, that the Lord God Almighty shall develop his church. The Bible said that he shall build his church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. That everyone, everyone, there's what is known as a baptism of hunger. God, Jesus, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, he made us understand that if you're hungry after righteousness, that you shall be filled. So whatever you are hungry for, that is what you shall be filled. We're going to pray upon the church that the Lord should baptize the church with a, with a hunger, with a baptism of spiritual growth and development. It's, it, 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 is, it, is, it is too it is too enough whereby we, we, we who ought to be teachers are now being the one being taught. That the Lord God Almighty should baptize us with the desire to grow, with the desire to develop, with the desire for spiritual growth and development. It can come upon us as a baptism. It can come upon us as a baptism. Let's open our and pray. Father Lord, we ask the Lord upon your church that may you baptize us, may you pour upon us a hunger, a hunger for growth and development, a hunger for spiritual growth and development in your, in your ways, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the things that you have called us to be. Lord, a hunger, a hunger. A hunger, baptize us, O Lord, with a hunger for spiritual growth and development in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, baptize me, O God. Baptize me more, 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 more hunger, more hunger. For spiritual growth and development. In the name of Jesus. Lord, baptize me, O oh Lord. Baptize your church. Baptize us, O oh Lord, with spiritual hunger. Spiritual hunger. Spiritual hunger for growth and spiritual growth and development. In the name of Jesus. Spiritual growth and maturity. In the name of Jesus. We are, oh my God. The Bible says, even where the little one shall become a thousand. Where the little one shall become a thousand shall be a strong nation. The youngest among us shall be a strong, it shall be a great nation. That is growth and development. Lord, a hunger, a hunger for spiritual growth and development. Mashakaba dosed upon our children, upon our, our teenagers, upon our fathers, upon our mothers, upon the youth, upon the church. Oh, oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Marata shete fredi sana manata, rete shete fredo sana manata, rete shete bredo Baptize us, O oh God. Baptize us, O oh Lord, with the hunger for spiritual growth and development. In the name of Jesus, upon the church. Upon the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Guyana, in the name of Jesus, Makado Sene Predo Shanamagada, Rata Sheke Freddy Manaste, Lefede Predekedegade, Lete Soko Palipada Padata, Lefedo. 
Marata shete fredo shadabada, rata shene meneste, rata sheke fredo shanamanata, leto shanamana celebre di shadabradash, rata sheke fede gabega degede, masheke sheko paliska da gabaga doste. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Yesterday I was talking to one of our, our brethren on, on the phone call, and our eyes were open while we were just conversing. That's truly and truly the children of God have become very lazy. The children of God have become very complacent. When was the last time we heard that new things are being bettered from the church? When was the last time we heard of new things being springing up from the church? And we broke, we broke in our hearts and ended that call. And we left the prayer points that let God Almighty inspire me. Lord, inspire your church. Lord, inspire your church. Inspire your church. Inspire us. Inspire us. Be our inspiration. Be our inspiration. Let's pray that the Lord God Almighty shall inspire us. Let's pray that the Lord God Almighty shall inspire us. The Lord God Almighty shall inspire every department. The Lord God Almighty shall inspire us. Not an inspiration from the devil. Not an inspiration from self. Lord God Almighty, inspire me. Father Lord, be my inspiration. Lord, be my inspiration. In the name of Jesus. For when the Lord inspire us, we, we, shall, we, shall, we shall give birth to new things. When the Lord inspires inspire us. We shall do wondrous things among the land of the living. When the Lord inspire us, we shall become a wonder. When the Lord inspire us, we shall be fresh. When the Lord inspire us, we shall, we shall be, we shall be, we shall be an inspiration. When he inspire us, we shall be inspired to inspire others. Father, Lord, inspire us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, inspire me by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be, let it be a steady within me. Let it be a steady within me. Let it be a steady within me. A gushing, a gushing of an ocean in the name of Jesus. A gushing of an ocean in the name of Jesus. Lord, be our inspiration. Lord, be our inspiration in this season and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. Be our inspiration in this season and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus. Be our inspiration in this season and beyond in the mighty name of Jesus masheke fredosha na manaste le fredosa kapadosha na minista lord inspire your church Lord, inspire your church. Lord, inspire your church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, inspire your church. Every member, every member, every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, mighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Finally, we're going to pray. We're going to pray that for divine settlement, marital, job, and other areas, our members seek God for settlement. Let's pray that in this season, that the Lord God Almighty shall settle his church. The Bible said, the, um, the, Bible, the Bible made us understand that the Lord can also satisfy us early. He can satisfy us early. He said that we should ask that our joy may be full. We're going to pray that Lord divinely settle your church, maritally, job-wise, and all areas, and her members. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord divinely settle your church, in the mighty name of Jesus, divinely set to your church and her members in the mighty name of Jesus in all areas, maritally, job-wise, in other areas that our members are seeking for your settlements. Lord, divinely set to your church in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we say thank you for your love. We say thank you for your kindness. We say thank you for your mercies and it forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we proceed, Lord, proceed with us. As we go into your word, Lord, teach us your word. As we go into your word, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that our eyes be open and our hearts be inspired. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, receive all the glory, all honor, and all adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
We want to bless the name of the Lord for another time in God's presence tonight. And we pray that he will minister to us even as we go into the Bible study for tonight. In Jesus' name. Let's bow down our heart as we talk to the Lord. Let's pray and say, Father, open me up. Speak to me tonight. Even as we have prayed, through your teaching tonight, through as we share together tonight, inspire me. Inspire me. Let your work come alive unto me once again to remind me all that I have known before. Holy Spirit divine, take over this section. I submit myself to you that you will take over me. Use my mouth, use my tongue, use my voice. Speak out through me to everyone under the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit divine, let us not just hear alone, the Lord to be inspired to take action. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we say better? Amen. God bless us in Jesus' name. Still on the teaching and reminding ourselves on evangelism that we started about two Wednesdays now. Two Wednesdays ago, I spoke on the pioneer of evangelism from the New Testament. And that's um, the person of John the Baptist. And we learned some few things about him. He obeyed God. He, he understood the assignment. He also stayed on the assignment that he was asked to do. Also pointed people to Jesus and not to himself. And we ended up that teaching that he handed over the harvest to Jesus. Last week, there was something that resonated so much in my spirit last week as Pastor Bankole took us that when we fail to speak, the blood of the sinners will be required of us. And I also remember, can't remember if it was from that teaching or um, one time or the other, one of the ministers mentioned it here, that when somebody died, you hear people saying, Oh, he has gone home, this, that. But nobody, you know, pause to, you know, to meditate. Is this person had actually gone home or to hell? So the issue of evangelism is a serious matter to every believer. It's a serious matter. I, I used to love evangelism. Not I used to. I love evangelism. I'm sorry for that statement. I love evangelism. And I just discovered that at times, I fail to do the needful. After last Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, at every time, I am prompted by the Holy Spirit to speak. So the matter of evangelism is a serious matter. And we must take it seriously. So I take the second study, continuation from the two weeks ago that I started. And every Christian is a soul winner. Every Christian is a soul winner. Winning the lost to the Lord. You see, some people believe that 
Evangelism or winning soul is only the work of a pastor. And I do not see anywhere it is written in the scripture that only pastor should be a soul winner. Hallelujah. So, it's just like we have established it two weeks ago, and I thank God Pastor also re repeated the same statement last week, that we are reminding ourselves there are things that we know before. But maybe it has become an oversight. We are doing what? We are reminding ourselves. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading verse 15. It says, And he said unto them, And he said unto them, Who said? And to who? Who are them? Who said? And who are them? And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. Guyana is part of the world he's talking about. Your community, your streets is part, is included in the world that Jesus is talking about here. Jesus himself is talking to his members. Who are his members as at that time? His disciples. And he said unto them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. And preach the gospel to every creature. Now, there are certain things in this scripture. There was an instruction that we can say is a commandment. And it is said to a specific set of people. Who are them? Who are they? The believers. The disciples. The disciples are not the pastors. They are not the priests. They are the followers of Jesus. Disciples are who? The followers of Jesus. How many followers of Jesus are here tonight? Followers of Jesus. Disciples are the followers of Jesus. And those are the people that Jesus is directing this instruction and commandment to. He's, and he said unto them, go ye. A command. That word is go ye. It is not a bleed. It is not um, a word of... Um, that is, we are given an option or to meditate or to decide on. It's a commandment. It said, go ye. Go ye means something that we need to take action immediately. Into the world. So we are given a place to go. We all have a place, a location to go and preach. What is our assignment? To go and preach. To go and spread the gospel to all, to every creature. Every creature. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us tonight as we go on. Every Christian should be an instrument in the hands of God for winning precious souls to a saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every Christian. I was watching a movie yesterday, and um, the woman was asking the other friend that this person is a Christian, so why should he be beating his wife? So the friend responded, he said, who is a Christian? He said, being a Christian is not that because you go to church that makes you to be a Christian. Christian. Christian means Christ. Like. Like Christ. Where the first call Christian is, was in Antioch. When they saw the attitude, the behavior, the dressing, the speech of the disciples. And the people around said, ah, these people look like Christ. 
And that was where the word Christian came forth. Hallelujah. So it is not a matter of I go to church or I do not do any other religion. And because I'm not, I do not belong to any other religion, I belong to this. Hallelujah. So every Christian, Christian is someone that has professed Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. And these are the people that Jesus is talking about in this place. And he said unto them. So he has said unto me, he has said unto you, he has said unto us. That we should do what? We should go into the world and preach the gospel. So as we look at this topic tonight, I pray the Lord will help us as we go on in Jesus' name. So Every Christian is a soul winner. We have said who is a Christian, a followers of Jesus. Also, uh, want to look at what is soul winning. Winning soul, what does it mean? What does it mean? Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Luke chapter 19, we'll do a lot of reading tonight. May God will help us. Luke chapter 19, verse 10, another person Ephesians 2, 9, 2, 1. Bro, Prince, Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Two, Luke 19, 10. Sister, rejoice. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Sister, Sister Toby, John chapter 1, verse 34 to 37. John 1, 34 to 37. So let me make it so simple. You are going to read and you're just going to tell us the definition of the winning is so or so winner from that scripture. Just tell us what that scripture says winning so is. Um, Brother Alex, Luke 5, 10. Luke 5, 10. Broyanu, Act chapter 5, verse 14. Act chapter 5, verse 14. Bro, if I, I hope everybody have Bible. <laughs> All right. Bro, if I, you read um, You read Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians 1, 13. And uh, Sister Dabira, 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1, 7. Right, fine. I gave you something. Okay. Um, Sister Susanna. Ephesians 2 8. Ephesians 2 8. So let's start. Luke 19 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So from this passage, um, uh, evangelism is to mean, mean basically to save life. Save that which is there lost. is a word in that passage I want you to use. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Yeah. There's a word I'm looking for in that passage, and you mentioned it so. Salvation? No. Son of Man? Who wants to help him? What is the definition of soul winning? To seek. You mention it. It's there in the scripture that you read. To what? To seek. To seek for something. So winning means concerning that public. Um, uh, <laughs> according to that scripture you read, means to seek. Jesus has come to do what? To seek. That which was lost. So we are going to seek. When you are winning so you are seeking the lost. You are seeking to bring the lost to Christ. 
you are seeking to bring the lost to Christ. Number two. Ephesians 2. Why are you raising your hand? So I can't remember what I gave you again because I have a lot of scripture here. Ephesians 2, 1. Once you were dead because of your disobedience. I don't want to talk, please. Let's concentrate. Once yes. you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. So, so many years saying that we are dead like our sins that we have. So Winnie in this area is trying to say that once we come to Christ, all the sins we have found. Which version did you read? NLT. Go and read King James. And you at a quickness who were dead in trespasses and sin. Mm -hmm. So Winnie in this passage is trying to say that we are dead to trespasses and sin. No. What is so winning according to that scripture? Translate it. Translate it. What is so winning according to that scripture? Said, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses. What's the meaning of quicken? Fasting. Fasting. Huh? Fasting. Fasting. To make alive. Quicken means to make alive. Look at it. Quicken, dead. So somebody, something that is dead is not being quickened. It's being brought to life. You are lost? Yes. Are you lost? Okay. So... The definition came before what happened before the salvation, right? Who were dead in trespasses, now are the quickened. So I've tried to turn it around for you. So, winning so in according to this scripture means what? Bringing that which was dead back to life. So anyone that is in sin is dead. Helping them to now realize or see salvation, helping them to accept salvation, we are bringing them into living, you know, bringing them to life. You understand? Okay, thank you. So number one, definition of soul winning is what? To seek the lost. To seek the lost. Number two is what? Only mommy is talking, no? Are we all here? To bring a life. Okay. Number three. So whenever we go for evangelism, we are going to seek the lost. We are going to bring to life. Right? Yes. Number three. John chapter 1, verse 34. 34 to 37. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Okay, what is definition of so many according to that scripture? All right. In my opinion, um, two two words jumped out to me that I could use to define a soul winner. The first is um, is in verse thirty four. It said it bear record, and another word I could say that to me is it testified. He stood okay. as a witness. Okay. And a witness or to witness is to affirm what you have seen or heard or experienced, or that you know something because it has been taught by divine revelation or inspiration. Okay. So you let people know what sharing. Yes, you okay. share, you bear record, you testify, or you are standing as a witness. Okay. So so um a, a what what the second definition yeah. that you discovered. The second definition I saw there is um it said behold the 
the Lamb of God. Behold means, saying behold means to look. So you are calling attention. A soul winner is someone that calls attention to someone else, to something else. You're not calling attention to yourself. You are pointing at the important person. You are pointing at Jesus. You are asking other people to look at Jesus, not at you. So, yeah. Let's clap for her. I love that. She brought two important information. Even though I have just only one definition from that passage, she brought us another one. Um, Winning so means testifying to what you have known. Testifying. That's the one she brought. And the one I have from that passage is pointing people to Jesus, bringing people in contact with Jesus. So every time we go out for evangelism, we are trying to do what? To bring people in contact with Jesus. One of the points we learned about John the Baptist is that he didn't point people to himself. He was pointing people to Jesus. And the moment he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of of God. And at the end of the day, when he had baptized Jesus and everything was testified and confirmed, he did what? The people that were with him, his disciples, did what? Switch over. He handed over the harvest to Jesus. He didn't say, oh, these are my souls. Like some people will say, my church. The church is not church of any man. It's a church of God. So anyone that God uses you to bring to Jesus, you are to hand them over to Jesus. Hallelujah. So bringing souls in contact with Jesus, to Jesus, to know him personally as their savior. Hallelujah. Okay. Luke 5.10. Luke chapter 5 verse 10. And it says, his, his partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. What version is that? Apologies. Apologies, ma. Um, so it says, and so, and so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with, 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 with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So what is the definition of soul winning according to that passage? Definition of, of soul winning according to this passage, from my understanding, is to go out and actually witness on men. There is a word. Catch. Catch. How many of us are going out to catch men for Jesus? How many? We are to catch men. Now, Jesus told Peter, Simon Peter, said he should throw his net. It was him that was giving Peter instruction this time around, right? He said, throw your net. And he had multitude of catching. We have prayed tonight that God should inspire us, Right? I don't know, maybe that's one of the things that's happening to me yesterday, precisely. There were some things, ideas, and visions I shared with senior pastor. And for some reasons, I did not even go back to those things anymore. But yesterday, my heart went to those things that I shared with him. And I scrolled to our conversation. I scroll up. That happened last year. And I scroll up to find it, and I was like, okay, there must be an action on this point. Hallelujah. So when God, uh, when we are to cash men for Jesus, he will teach us how to cash men. Hallelujah. He told Peter, I said, you will become what? You will now be cashing men. He said, I will make you fishers of men. Is God that may make a man to become a fisher. So one of the divination or so winning is to cash men for Jesus. Cash men for Jesus. I will cash men for Jesus. Say it to yourself, you will cash men for Jesus. 
Alleluia. Next one, Acts chapter 5, verse 14. Acts 5, verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitude, both men and women. Okay. Um, to my understanding, just um, adding people, adding people to the Lord, the kingdom of God. Depopulating the kingdom of darkness. And what? And populating the kingdom of God. Hey, the Lord will help us. How many of us are populating the kingdom? How are we populating the kingdom? Depopulating the kingdom of darkness and be adding more souls to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, there is something that I also want us to note. I learned this through my husband. You know, at times I used to be worried that ah, we have gone to do outreach. You know, some of us, we understand, we go to Linden to go and do outreach. We go to this to go and do outreach. And pastor will have carried us to Batika. You understand? And I was like, ah, how are we going to be doing outreaches where we will not establish church? Where we will not be able to bring the people to church? He says that is not the, the original focus of evangelism. The original focus is to tell people about Jesus. Tell people about Jesus. As many places you can go to do evangelism, share the gospel. Share the gospel. So the number one of Number one objective is not to fill the church, is to fill the kingdom. Is to what? To feed the kingdom, fill the kingdom, populate the kingdom. Someone said this recently. You know, it's not every soul that you want that God had to you in your own local church. Somewhere, somewhere, or the other, you will be a link, either a first link, or a middle link, or a last link. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul planted Apollo water. God brings the increase. Hallelujah. Look at the three links of people. So it is not a problem of they are not coming to my local assembly. The concern should be, am I adding this soul to the kingdom? Hallelujah. In as much as we want the church also to be populated, but let our original focus be populating the kingdom. So our harvest should go to Jesus, not to the local assembly. So the local assembly is a second... Um, I don't know what to call it now. It should be the secondary uh, objective. Because if we have souls that doesn't have a place of worship to go, we can help them to come, then we can disciple them. Hallelujah. Because the church community is a place where we are taught to become what God wants us to be and become what Fishers also. Hallelujah. The church community is a place where we are being mentored, where we are being empowered, where we are being taught. So for those that we don't have a place of worship or a close by to learn about the Bible or learn about the God, about the new faith they have found, then we help them to join us and then grow them. Hallelujah. I was privileged to say, to meet one of uh, our soul from juvenile center today. It's been years. If I mention the name now, all of the majority of us that have been here for long, we know the person I'm talking about. I was in the bank to do some transaction, and as I finished, I was walking out, and he jumped up. I didn't even see him. He saw me, and he said, Mommy, I looked. I was shocked. I said, what? This is the least person I will have 
ever said I will come across. He said, I'm back in Georgetown. I said, wow, that's good to know. Where are you now? Where do you live? What's going on with you? And the next thing he said was, I want to get baptized. I said, why? <laughs> he was shocked. I said, why? I know why I asked, why do you want to get baptized? He said, I want it to be a new beginning in my life. I said, wow, that's good. Let's get to talk. Come, you know where to locate me. He said, Daddy, I said, when you come, you know where to see Daddy. So I was going. Then I had a nudge in my spirit. Go and collect his number. And I went back. I collected his number. Now, I don't know for a long years he has left us and gone to another region. I don't know what brought that urge and hunger when he saw me. I want to get baptized. And you know when the Guyani said, I want to get baptized. Uh -huh. They have gotten to that peak. They want to do U-turn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, we are to point people to Jesus. If the soul, the harvest, is meant for our local assembly, they will definitely be added. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next one. Colossians 1, 13. 18. 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So, Colossians 1, 18. 18. Oh, it should be a 13, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, it should be 13. Because I even underlined the, the word there. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Colossians 1, 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So, so many in that place is what? Oh, it's just to help um, take us from depopulate the kingdom of darkness and help populate the kingdom of God. Okay, you read King James, right? Okay, the word is there. Who wants to help us? Dr. Joe, you are quiet. May I say something? Translate. Uh -huh. Translate. There's also another word there. Delivered. Delivered from what? From the power of darkness. Anyone that has seen the world there are in darkness. And if we don't go to deliver them, to snatch them out of darkness, they remain in darkness. So, so winning is what? Deliverance, delivered from the power of darkness. And bring them, translate them, help them. We are not to translate them, right? It's God, but we are to go. We are the vessel that God will use. We are the instrument that God will use. Pastor Bancoli said something last Sunday, last Tuesday and Wednesday when I asked a question. He said we have to speak. When we don't speak, do you know since that last Wednesday, I've been asking God to help me on how to speak to those my neighbors. Hallelujah. Even if they have been hearing from other sources, let them also hear from me. And I've been, I've been, Lord, what method? How? Inspired me. We have prayed tonight. God inspired me. Lord, we inspire us in Jesus' name. Okay, next one. First John 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. 
and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Um, so I think for me, soul winning, we are to show people how to walk in the light and have and how to have fellowship with one another. And how to, to introduce them to the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses them. Introducing also. them to what we cleanse their sin. Some people, we give them varieties of method for their sins to be forgiven. But what are we to tell them? We are to tell them how their sin can be forgiven. Jesus is the only reason. He's the only, um, he's the only way for sin to be forgiven. No sacrifice. No amount of confession to a bishop or to a priest or to what do they call it? Jesus is the only way by which a sin can be forgiven. Hallelujah. So I want us to use the last one. The last one is John 141 or John 142. Who is speaking? Don't use bedroom voice. I gave Sister Susanna something. Ephesians 2 verse 8. Ephesians 2 verse 8. Okay, Ephesians 2 8. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves... It is the gift of God. Come again, come again. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye, are ye saved through faith, and that, not, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Okay. So what is so winning according to that scripture? The gift of God. Mommy is laughing. <laughs> Who wants to help her? Save true faith. Faith. Gift. Grace. <laughs> so what is it? Who wants to help her? Dr. Michael. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I see. Okay. <laughs> Mommy, come back, come back, come back again. By grace, by faith. The grace of God. Okay? I love that one. Uh -huh. Somebody else wants to say something. Eh? <laughs> Dr. Joe, you want to say something? Okay. So, uh, so winning is by grace. Is by what? Is by grace. So winning is by grace. And also, we should also have this understanding that 
It comes, salvation comes by faith. Salvation comes by faith. So whenever we go for soul winning, we should pray that God should help them to have that faith, to believe in what we are presenting to them. The grace of God will always be available for soul winners. Every soul winner carries the grace of God. I can't put it the way you put it. <laughs> because grace, yes, to be, to be a may faith to be available to receive that gift. So grace is the um, every soul winner carries the grace, but we must also have it that it is by faith that salvation occurs. It's by faith. So there is no amount of the words that we preach that will change someone. Is the faith available in the person that we are speaking to that do the work of salvation. Hallelujah. So, all my definitions, we have exhausted my definitions. So, we have seen that we are to go out to seek the lost. We are to bring to life those who were dead spiritually. We are to bring them in contact with Jesus, pointing them to Jesus. We have also seen that we are to add the souls to the Lord first, to the Lord first. It's not to add them to the local church first, but to the Lord first. Also, after we have added them to the Lord first, then we ask if they have a place, number one thing that I normally ask when I'm talking to someone is, do you have a place of worship? If they don't have, then I cannot proceed and say, can, I, can you worship with us? Hallelujah. So the primary assignment is to point people to the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, every soul won by the Lord are for him. Is the one that do the, the conversion, the conviction. Hallelujah. We have also seen in Colossians 1, 13, to deliver in my note that I have rescuing, to rescue them from darkness to light. Only the blood of Jesus can cleanse every man from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, um, the second part is how can we become a soul winner? How can we become a soul winner? We have read in the first place, in the first introduction, that every believer is what? Is an instrument for soul winning. Every believer are called into the assignment, according to Mark chapter 16, verse 15, that Go ye therefore into the world. Hallelujah. So can I hear from us? How can we become a soul winner? Can I hear from us? If I go into my notes. Yes, sir. Okay, I thought you were raising your hand. So I've called you. How can we become a soul winner? Sir? That's how to become a soul winner. <laughs> Go by going out for evangelism. By going out, taking action. Okay, that's one. By going out, yes. How do you water? <laughs> by following up. Okay, I'm hearing from us. Yes, sister, rejoice. Leave your comfort zone and go out. Okay? I just started from the beginning. <laughs> okay. 
older, sir. <laughs> I will have keep. I will have said two of you should keep quiet first. <laughs> okay, I'm, I want to hear you. You want to say something? Okay, I thought you were raising your hand. Okay, brother Alex, how can we become a soul winner? Okay. Okay. So you have to make a conscious effort to obey. Okay. So let me come back to Pastor and Bama. You have first mentioned that we must be born again. You cannot give what you don't have. Sinner cannot do so winning. Someone that have not been saved, a church goer, cannot be what? Cannot become a soul winner. You cannot give what you don't have. So everyone that wants to become a soul winner must first of all, must have had an encounter with Jesus. Before the disciples were made, Fishers of men. What happened? Jesus said to Peter, I will make you. But what happened before he said that to Peter? Peter had first of all surrendered his boat to Jesus. That was the first step. Surrendering your boat to Jesus. Giving your life to Jesus. Completely surrendering. Now, after he has surrendered his boat to Jesus and Jesus used the boat, as at that time Peter was not converted yet to, and Jesus said, I want to bless you. I want to say thank you to you. Throw your net. And he threw his net and he had so much fishes. And he did what? What did he do? That encounter humbled him. And he did what? What did he do? He didn't follow immediately. He said something. He's, he was a sinner. He, at that point, he said, I am a sinner. Please depart from me. He never see himself as somebody that can be associated with Jesus. He looked at his wretchedness. He looked at his, you know, ah, ah No. This is, mm -mm. then Jesus saw that, yes, this is somebody that wants to submit to him. Hallelujah. It was at that point that Jesus said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. From that point, he encountered Jesus. He saw the reality of Jesus. So someone that would present Jesus to others must have had an encounter. What is the, 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 the story of your conversion? What can you say that happens to you? How did you get converted? You know, at times, some of us that are born into Christianity, we find it difficult to explain how we are converted. Hallelujah. I thank God that God took me down that lane. Unlike for so many years, I was in the choir, singing in the choir, and I was not saved. But at a point in time, when I could understand, I was in a gathering, in a program, when Jesus encountered me. Now, it is not because I'm following my parents to church. It is not because it's a must. I can't stay back at home when they are going. Hallelujah. At this point, I was far away from there. I was not under their control or their distance. But I found Jesus by myself. And I surrendered my life to him. Myself and daddy went for an outreach sometimes ago in our meeting. And we got there. Daddy just told me, you're going to talk to them. And I was like, okay, what will I say? We started praying. We prayed with them. And the next thing was that I started sharing the testimony of my conversion. <laughs> because I do not have the message prepared that I will preach to them. I just share with them. 
the, the, my conversion story, my encounter, and every steps of my growth, I just shared with the, with the gathering. So someone that will be a soul winner must have been born again. Number two, we must constant after uh -huh, in Acts chapter two, in Acts chapter one, sorry. Act one. Jesus said to the disciples, He said, Tarry, wait until you are what? And deal with power. The work of soul winning is not a work that we can do with our wisdom or with our skills or with our um, eloquent English. I don't know if I'm correct. <laughs> it's not, it's, soul winning is not the multitude of words on how we can organize it. It's done with the help of the Holy Spirit. We look at the life of the disciples. They are kind of people when Jesus Christ was still with them that they could not do anything. Despite they've been following Jesus. They've been seeing every miracle, everything he's been doing. Uh, he's teaching even in their presence. He has been teaching. But at some point in time that Jesus was not around them, they are to face with some challenges to, you know, to solve the problem they cannot. And Jesus looked at them. What kind of faithless set of people? You have been with me for this so many years, yet you don't know what to do. Hallelujah. So, so winning is not a job that we can do without the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to them, he said, but ye shall receive power. Is that where he said it? He told them to tarry at Jerusalem until they are endued with power. We need power to go for evangelism. We need to be endued with power. Where is it now? If you see before me, please let me know. Is this same one? It. I didn't have that in my notes, so maybe I'm just. Uh, it, where he said they should tarry until they are in deal with power. I don't know. Maybe that one is just coming. I don't know. Yeah. So in Act 1, it said that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall witness. Witnesses, so winners must be empowered before going. Hallelujah. So now, when we are empowered, what do we do with it? What are we doing with the empowerment that we receive? We see so many believers today, myself inclusive. We can speak in tongues for hours. But is it just to be speaking in tongues? Are we endued with power to be speaking in tongues? Just only to be speaking in tongues? He said, you'll be in deal with power and you will do what? And you will witness. The empowerment is to what? To enable us to witness. Because when we want to speak, said, the spirit will do what? We teach us what to say. Right? We remind us what we have been taught. What God, what we have read in the scripture. He will remind us what to do. So, it is not the work that we do just by ourselves. It is with the help of the Holy Spirit. How can I become a soul winner? We must be born again, except you're born again. Number two, 
we must what? Be endued with power. Number three, we must constantly be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. We must constantly be what? Prompting. Um, constantly be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 8 verse 29. The Bible tells us that Philip was inspired, was prompted by the Holy Spirit to join himself to that chariot of the Ethiopia, you know. And he obeyed. And immediately he joined. And what happened at the end of the day? He was able to win that soul. So we must, number one, we must be born again. Number two, filled with the Holy Ghost. Number three, be sensitive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Number four, we must what? We must be caring for souls. We must be a compassion for souls. We must hunger for souls. Bible tells us, and so many times, scriptures refer to Jesus that, and he was moved with compassion. How much are we moved with compassion with souls that are perishing? How much? Someone that does not have compassion cannot care for anybody. One of the gifts of the doctors is the compassionate aspect of their life. They want to see their patient well. They want to see, you don't want, you don't want to see your patient being well. You don't want to see your patient died. Yes. Why did I say so? Because I remember when I had a baby in the and then, um I, what 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 are they calling it? NNV, I mean, what are you people calling it? Eh? Huh? I saw nurses cried when David died. I saw nurses crying. Even when myself, my tears were already gone. I saw a particular nurse. Till today, she's still so much connected to me. She was wailing, she was shivering, she was crying because she doesn't, she wouldn't have expected that baby to die. And she was like, no, this baby was fighting. She, this baby was doing well. So, I could see the compassionate aspect of the medical practitioners. They don't want to see their patient died. You people are laughing because you are still a student. <laughs> ask, ask, ask Dr. Joseph. He will tell you after they have labored on a soul, on a patient, they don't want to see. They want to see that patient get well. There was a particular doctor. If I mention the doctor, some of us that are in GBAC, we know the doctor. A period that I was constantly in the hospital. He's not directly my doctor, but because he knows me very well, he always gives me a call to check on me. How are you feeling? That is a compassionate heart. Jesus had that compassion. If you must be a soul winner, you must carry that compassion. You don't want to see so going to hell. Hallelujah. Psalm 142 verse 4. And uh, how can I become a soul winner? We share this last one and uh, we call it a day. In the soul winning of a soul, in the winning of a soul, we may be the first link. I mentioned that earlier on. We may be the first link the middle link, or the last link. Somewhere, somehow, we are a link to a soul. So you don't let any soul just pass by you. How can I become a soul winner? Don't let any soul pass by. Is it pass by you all? I don't know if I'm speaking that correct English. 
you are a link somewhere, somehow. So don't feel discouraged that because I preach to this person and this person under must, must come to my church, like a movie that I'm watching, that the man said, I want to become a soul winner now. I want to be going out to win so. And he, he went out the first day. He walked and walked and walked and walked. He couldn't meet anybody. He was almost getting discouraged until when he met one person. And he, he was talking to the person, didn't know that this person is a deaf. And he preached passionately, passionately, and was expecting a response that I'm giving my life to Jesus. And the man did not say anything. Because he couldn't even hear everything that he had said. And he was like, by force, by fire, you will give your life to Jesus. And so what that day, he said, now, I know, the, I know the strategy. He told his wife, I know the strategy to win so. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffered violence. <laughs> and so the other day, he went out. He was calling somebody, and the person did not. He grabbed the person. He said, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. <laughs> He said, by force, you must give your life to Jesus. <laughs> it's not like that. It's not like that. Somehow, somehow, we are a link. Somehow, either first, middle, or last link. That will lead someone to salvation. So, because we have been reaching out and maybe somebody is not following you to church, doesn't mean that you have not sowed a seed. So we should not let a soul pass us by. Hallelujah. Can we bow down our hearts? Any question or addition or contribution? Yes, ma'am. Question? Ah, okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> that one is big. Is that? Jump question. <laughs> oh, we had <are> some. <laughs> Evangelism. I've not really do that research. <laughs> yes, but if you have the answer. Okay. To every creature. It's um, uh, more of making sure that the soul you witness to okay. abide. abide. And that is the essence of inviting them to the church under your very nose, where you can watch that seed grow or germinate and grow and also start bringing forth. So, so okay. evangelism is something that every one of us... General. It's general. Wherever you find yourself, just speak in the bus. You might not get to see some of them for life. Mm. But just speak the word. Sow that seed and go your way. But when it comes to soul winning, so you have winning. to be deliberate about it. Mm. That this soul, I'm going to win this soul for the I kingdom. And do use all soul. the strategies and everything within your power to get that soul. Or a particular mm. environment like we've been doing this harvest. Okay, wow. I'm seeing a big picture of something there. Evangelism is general. As many, where, anyhow, where you find yourself, is spreading the message, the news. But so many has to be deliberate. Any addition to that? Thank you, Ma. I love that. Thank you. Yes, Ma. Um, any other question or addition? Okay. The last part that I didn't talk about tonight, we will talk about it, is why every Christian should be a soul winner. Why every Christian should be a soul winner. And result of soul winning. So we'll do that anytime I come up again. Can we talk to the Lord tonight? There's one other thing I mentioned tonight. That compassion. 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 We must have compassion is when we have the gift of compassion that we will, we will not let any soul slip away from our hand. 
do I really have that compassion for souls? How do I feel about unbelievers around me? How do I feel? Do I feel sorry for them? Do I care for their soul? Do I want to see them being saved, rescued from darkness? Do I want to see them know the truth and their eyes be open? Lord, after this teaching and training and reminding ourselves, Lord, I don't want to remain the same again. Where do I stand, Lord Jesus? Show me your mercy. Let there be hunger and compassion in me. It's one of the attributes of our Lord Jesus. He always be moved with compassion. One of the reasons why he died on the cross for us. Attribute of compassion. To help me go after everyone that I'm coming across and spread the gospel and tell them. There's one old woman that always passed by my, my shop almost every time. She will pause, she will say, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. She's not facing one person in particular. But she will just pause. And everyone around that place is hearing what this old woman is saying. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He's coming back. Those words, that woman will say those words. She will walk around in the market and she'll be saying those words. She's spreading the gospel. We went for evangelism sometimes ago in Sophia, and Bro Yanu was sharing with me that a young boy do not even care if they are listening to him or not. He was just like, you know, like um, um, cry, like um, money cry or something. He was saying it loud. Jesus loves you. Give your life to Jesus. He died for you. How do I want to spread the gospel? It takes someone that has compassion to go out of their comfort zone. To go out of the norms of the environment and do the abnormal thing. And do things that people will look at you and say, is this one normal? Lord Jesus, I want to be abnormal for you. I want to go all out for you. I don't want to keep my mouth silent or quiet anymore. Help me to preach, to say the word, to tell the word about you. You have commanded me to go. Help me, Lord. The hunger, the compassion, the inspiration, let it flow consistently in me. Everywhere I find myself, I will tell someone about Jesus. Thank you, Father. After this training, Lord Jesus, we don't want to remain the same again. We want our heart to be still up. We want our heart to be still up. We want our heart to be still up. Both doing evangelism and doing so many, we will go all out for it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. As we continue in prayer, I want us to stretch forth our hands, even as we bless the mommy that God has used to bless us this evening. Let's pray that even this word she had spoken, that it would also be evident in all of our lives, also in her life, that we'll become true soul winners in words, in deeds, in our character, in our actions. I will become true soul winners. And as we take on this clarion call, that heaven will back us up in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. 
let your name be praised, let your name be glorified, for in Jesus' name we pray, for in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. I would want to welcome everybody to today's um, hour of prayer and revelation. It's a blessing to have every one of us here today. I would want us to do it to also package our offering even as we listen to a few announcements. Um, the baskets would go around even as we offer unto God our offerings. As we know today being, uh, being a Wednesday, it's our weekly activity which we meet for 6 p.m. And also we'll be meeting again on Sunday for another wonderful time in God's presence. The Sunday boats here on ground online will be converging again for another amazing time in God's presence. And our service starts by 10 o'clock and the Sunday school kick off by 9. We've been having a wonderful, we've been having a wonderful series on marriage, on relationship, on homes, on everything that concerns a man relating to a woman. And it has been a wonderful time. And the series continues. Um, I think we'll be more guided on... Because next Sunday, uh, Youth in the House, next Sunday is also be... Next Sunday is also a Youth Sunday. So we would also share with us how we are going to flow with that. Um, so let's keep our hearts open. So for the instructions that would follow. So we were guided on what we are going to be expecting on Sunday. Amen. Amen. And coming the 27th and the 28th, we'll be having a street evangelism. So all what, what we've been hearing, all what we've been taught, we would put them to work. Or would, we've done the theory section, then we'd now do the practical section. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. I want us to bow our heads where we are, even as we bless God once again for another time in God's presence. For what God, all God has helped us to achieve even in the short time we've been here. Yes, I appreciate him because it's by his help that he has brought us here today. And it's him alone we have come to see. It's him alone we have come to tabernacle with. And as is always seen and documented in scriptures and all, always known, that anyone that sees Jesus or that fellowship with heaven does not remain the same. Let's pray that even as we are coming to a close, that even our life will have the residues of this encounter. Our life will carry evidences that we've met with Jesus. That we've not just come to waste our time uh, uh, at a time like this, that heaven will leave a mark upon us. As Paul said, I bear on my body a mark, and when men see it, they should not trouble me. Father, we pray all that concerns us. You would help us. You would show us mercy. You would bring peace to all that concerns us. You would bring peace to all that concerns us. You would bring peace to all that concerns us. Psalm was speaking in the book of 100, verse 1600, verse 2, where David was speaking and he said that he has heard the joy and he has heard the gladness of, of, of God. We pray this would also be our portion. Let your name praise. Even as we have offered on to your offering, it's a prayer that you accept it. Thank you from the, from the places, from the many, from the substance you've blessed us with. Thank you for giving us the heart to offer back to you. Lord, it's a prayer that you continually bless us the more. It's a prayer that resources, substance would never be lacking in our household. It's a prayer that you continually, continually open many and mighty doors unto us. And we'll always find reasons to tell you back thank you. Thank you for that transferring prayers. For in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let's share the grace together as a church. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you once again, everyone, for coming, and have a wonderful night.